Good morning, Charles. How are you? I am well, Dan. How are you? I'm uh, I'm really good this morning. I appreciate you uh, granting me some hospitality. I'm recording from your dining room today. As no problem. $5, five dollars an hour. Okay, put it. Uh, yeah, put it. Put it on my tab. I'll uh, whatever. Whatever we. Whatever monetization we make on this episode is all yours. So, oh, nice. don't, don't spend that six cents all in one place. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm headed to see a client in Jacksonville this morning or early afternoon, <clears throat> and uh, your house is right on my way from my current dwelling down in the Kissimmee area. Lake Mary is is on the way up to Jacksonville, so it made sense to uh, make part of the journey before we recorded this morning. So thanks again for that. Yeah, no, no problem. All right. What's, uh, what's going well for you? Uh, let's see what's going well for me. So, um, dry January has gone, uh, very well for me. Yeah. Last, last January is a little bit more of a struggle. I felt for me. Um, mm. I, I mean, I'm not a huge drinker by any means, but, um, you know, I, I definitely, when I'm out at the bars and, you know, just meeting friends and stuff, we're just at a restaurant. I, I definitely enjoy a glass of wine and, uh, you know, I like to relax a little bit with some alcohol. So, um, this, this January has flown by and I haven't mm. had really any cravings whatsoever. And it's not like I, you know, drink my face off in December or anything. So, um, <laughs> that's not, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, you know, it, it was, uh, it definitely, uh, it was, uh, it's been a lot easier than I really thought it was going to be. So, um, yeah, I'm enjoying it, and uh, I think I'm going to, you know, keep going a little bit, probably at least until Valentine's Day. Oh, nice. Um, I might, uh, might treat myself for a, a couple glasses of wine with, uh, with the lady at that point. So how about you? What's, uh, what's, what's going on? Uh, what's going so well for you? Dry January has been pretty, uh, pretty easy. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I bet. Keep... After, after uh, a dry 12 months, yeah. Yeah, I keep a little uh, countdown app on my uh, on my phone that uh, has both past events and things I'm looking forward to in the future. And I created one when I stopped drinking, and uh, I'm at 387 days since uh, wow. since my last alcohol. Yeah, and nice. uh, and again, I don't know. I don't know if that's a lifelong decision. Um, you know, just just like I tell people about living in my my tiny house. Uh, I may not want to keep doing it forever, but right now I'm enjoying it. So I'm going to keep doing it. And, uh, that's, that's where my, my dryness is, uh, your falls dryness. Into that, it falls into that category as well. It's working, it's working for me right now and I'm enjoying it right now. So yeah. I, uh, I don't see any reason to stop. Um, but, uh, okay. In addition to that, I am back to, uh, having propane at my camper. I, uh, Oh, congratulations. My, nice. Yeah. You thank you. Now, now I, I can, uh, yeah, I took one cold shower um, because yeah, when when you have no hot water, you either shower cold, or when you're staying in an <laughs> RV park, you can go to the shared facility, or when you're staying in an RV park that your girlfriend's also staying in, you can just shower at her place. But uh, so far, because you know my my schedule is a bit different from hers, I I still, I mean, I I wake up before five o'clock pretty much every morning. You know, my alarm sets at five, is set up for five, but I'm usually up around five four forty, and uh, you know, going to bang on her door, <laughs> You're like, hey, I'm here for my daily shower. Does it? Uh, I wouldn't want someone <laughs> to do that to me. So the golden rule <laughs> says I shouldn't do that to her either. Uh, so it's either go to the shared facility or just shower cold. And but those days are behind me. Um, I did find out that I'm going to have to. <laughs> I, I replaced the hose and then found out that the ho the new hose I got didn't have the right size nozzle on it. So I had to go to uh, an auto parts store and then a home improvement store to try to find an adapter. And I finally found that. And then when I got back and got the hose and the adapter installed, then it looked like the uh, regulator uh, just from being, you know, the regulator is just a little, a little piece that is it's similar to the regulator that you would have on a propane grill, but it goes on the outside of the camper and just being, you know, exposed to the elements for the last seven years. As soon as I went to work with it at all, all the brittle plastic that sort of covers it just broke apart and fell on the ground, just like oh. dust. And so now I've got a new regulator being delivered today, but the, the old regulator, I was able to, I, I was able to make it work. It's just, I know that it's not in condition that it should be you know, there for the long term. So Amazon's going to yeah. give, bring me a new one. 
today and then I'll, nice. I'll take everything apart again and replace the regulator and then and then hopefully my my gas heating issues will be done but uh you know compared to when something goes wrong with your house i mean this is going to be out the door probably a $75 fix and I'll not have to worry about it again for another five years. Yeah, so, that's fantastic. Yeah, I remember when I owned a house and it was, you know, you couldn't go to Target or Lowe's or Home Depot without spending $200. It just every right. single every single trip. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, thankfully, uh, camper life is is not like that, at least in in that regard. I mean, there, there are other challenges and, and other concerns, but uh, yeah, having to just spend lots and lots of money on little things is not something I have to deal with. And that's nice. I like that. Yeah, no, I'm glad you're you're appreciating that. You're seeing that that side because, you know, not being able to like with that pro without propane, you can't cook, right? You can't right. You know, there's no hot water. There's I mean, it's uh no heat if you needed it, right? True. So yeah. um yeah, that can that can definitely affect a lot. A lot of my, I'm a princess, man. So when, especially when I'm sleeping, so <laughs> you like hot food, and hot water, and hot, yeah. and hot air when yeah. it's cold. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm a freaking princess. Um, so yeah, I, I am too. I am too. I, uh, <laughs> you know, I can, I can rough it for a couple of days, which I did, and it wasn't a big deal. I would just, yeah, you know, eat eat food that was prepared at stores or restaurants for a couple of days, and you know, deal with the showering situation. But uh, I'm glad those days are are now behind me, and yeah. Um, I'm up and running and it didn't take me. It was a little frustrating because I'd never done it before where it's like, okay, I buy one part to fix it. And then I replace that part. It's like, oh no, now I need another part. Okay. Now I've got those two replaced. Okay. Now I need a third part. And that's just kind of comes along with, you know, doing something you've never done before. You don't know yeah. what you don't know. Exactly. And so having to run around town to different stores was a little bit frustrating, but uh, again, it wasn't that expensive. And in half a day I got it fixed. So I will count my blessings. Yeah, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. No, no, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna whine and complain too much. Now in the moment I was whining and complaining a lot. I was like, man, I can't believe I gotta go find an adapter. This is ridiculous. <laughs> but uh when the project was all done and I was enjoying the hot water in the shower, I was like, okay, that that could have been much worse. I'm glad that yeah. went as easily as it did, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um and then it probably made that that shower feel a little bit better. Oh yeah, absolutely. Hundred percent. Uh, okay, so um, let before we get into some you know apps or little uh, purchases that we're happy about, uh, let's talk about our um, our book here, uh, Atomic yeah. Attraction by Christopher Canwell, and we're going to start on the section on hairstyles. And before we do. Uh, I will ask you, Dan, what's going on with your hair and what's been going on? Like, what's, what's your, <laughs> is, is, there, is this a concern? No, 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 is this... no, oh, no, okay. no, no. Uh, no I'm, I'm going to answer it too. I just oh, like, gotcha. uh, okay. what, what, has, what has been your approach to your hairstyle since you were a kid up through oh, you know, your yeah, high school so and college years? Sure. And what do, you, what do you do with your hair now? I mean, it's funny cause I, I've got my, my sister made me a, uh, for my 40th birthday, um, party. She basically made, a. uh, a, a montage of many years of pictures of me throughout, you know, uh, since I was a little kid and I'm looking mm -hmm. at a lot of my hairstyles here. So this is, so if you really want <laughs> nice. to see this, you can come into the office and take a look. And I've, I went through some pure funky periods, definitely in college. I went through a lot. Like I grew my hair out really long, really long meaning. I mean, just, you know, kind of, you know, like hanging here or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I've got naturally curly wavy hair, but as soon as it gets a little bit long, it really turns into a fro. And, okay. uh, yeah. Um, I believe, uh, yeah. So the, uh, I, I believe that's affectionately called the Jew fro. Um, I am, I do have some Jewish descendancy in me, uh, ancestry in me. So, uh, yeah. Um, that did not look very well. I always never made it past <laughs> the awkward stage because it always oh, was yeah. just like long enough to be like, it, you know, maybe a little greasy or a little bit, you know, frizzy and stuff. It just never really looked good. And, um, I, you know, the, back then I really didn't do a lot of research into how to, how to style it or didn't go to a, you know, somebody who knew what they were doing to kind of keep it growing long, but make it look good. So, and then I like, and then I shaved my head. I mean, shaved, shaved. And, uh, and that was right before I had a passport picture taken and that last 10, like 10 years, you know? Oh, so, wow. so, I mean, I look like a convict, I swear, man, in that, in that <laughs> picture. And, uh, uh, yeah. And then I remember we were traveling through through Europe with my family. And at that time, they were still checking passports. It was before the EU. 
And so we were just driving to another country. And I remember we had to show our passports to the, uh, to the, um, the border patrol there. And, uh, <laughs> My mom's like, you look like a terrorist. And, and and it was like, they looked at me a couple of times because I had grown my hair out pretty quickly after I realized the mistake I made by, uh, <laughs> by going that short. It just didn't look good on me. And I, the problem was I was pale, right? Like I had no color to my skin. So that definitely didn't work for me. Um, and then, and then afterwards, um, you know, I, I basically, I, I kind of grew out maybe a little bit longer than this, but recently, you know, I've, uh, this is probably one of the my favorite hairstyles is cause it's, it's easy to maintain. It's short. Um, and, um, I don't need a lot of product to kind of keep it where, you know, where I want it. Uh, and it takes me like less than 30 seconds to, to get ready in the morning for that. So, um, yeah, this is, this is probably my favorite in terms of maintenance and look for sure. Nice. I've, uh, I've only, I've always had some sort of, uh, variant on a, uh, traditional sort of businessman haircut where you know i I it would be short over here and then parted uh part on the left and then i would kind of sweep this over okay and um right now it's it's a little bit different i I remember seeing i've seen a little a picture of you as a little kid and you had that businessman haircut like you probably i think you were in a suit too yeah it was very formal I, uh, very formal. I, I, I know what picture you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. And so um, right now it's a little different. Um, it's a little more extreme in that I'm keeping this side of it very, very short. Like, yeah, um, my my stylist does like a number one on the side in the back. And then this I'm trying to grow out the top of it. Um, but I've also done sort of, you know, just kind of military haircut, like high and tights and, uh, you know, crew cuts and stuff like that. And uh, usually pretty short when when my hair gets longer, it starts to get a little bit wavy, which is mm. what I'm doing right now. And I'm going to see how how long I can grow the top. I mean, this would still be considered short or medium, I think. But uh, yeah, I'm going to see and I let the top keep going and see what I if I like that. And then if I do, I may decide to go a little bit longer on the sides as well. I don't know. It's. But yeah, that's, I, I've not done anything. I've never had long hair because as it starts to get long, it kind of just goes straight out. It doesn't really okay. go long and, and yeah. lay down at all. But, right. You know, uh, mine, mine, mine as well. And that's when I was just like, uh, I don't know how long I can keep this up. When you went real short, did you, did you actually like take a blade to, or did you just like use clippers without a guard? Uh, it was just clippers without a guard. It was never like skin, mm-hmm. you know, um, but uh it was yeah <laughs> it was yeah, we, i mean it was preserved in in history because i it was on my passport for for so many years we did that a few times in college where uh the guys would just get together one you know one guy had a pair of clippers and we would just go no guard and just all the way down and uh yeah i don't i don't think that's a great look for me but uh yeah i don't know it's it's not bad but i i like a little more going on than just that you know it's certainly easy to take care of i mean other than you know scrubbing your scalp when you take a shower you don't really have yeah. to do anything you can't do anything to it you know putting product in when you have you know just a 16th of an inch of hair all over your head product does nothing <laughs> so yeah you know and and the thing was too i think it was during in the winter time for me so like i said i was mm. really pale and for some you know i just i don't think it, it looked did not look good on me being so pale and having no hair um that was just i feel it just didn't work. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll talk about that in a second about mm-hmm. uh, when one is bald. Uh, what are the things you can do? Uh, what you know? What what is the if if you don't do anything? What does that do to make it look worse? And what are the things you can do to make it look better? So we'll we'll talk about that here in a uh, in a second. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit because guys guys in their hairstyle. Um, are, it's something a lot of guys do take seriously or feel like they should take seriously, even though they don't. Um, how long uh, does it take you to get your hair looking the way that uh, you feel comfortable going out or going to work? Um, what what kind of, I mean, outside of, you know, just washing it in the shower, what, what else yeah. do you do? Um, so really, you know, to be honest with you, um, I might once in a while, I've got like a, a leave-in conditioner. Um, mm-hmm. that I like every once in a while, if it's like a little dry, um, I'll, sometimes I'll, I'll use that. Um, and then, uh, once in a while I'll, I have this, this clay, um, uh, mat 
paste basically mm-hmm. it's pretty thick and i just kind of wet my hands rub rub the the paste on there and um and just kind of flip that through my hair with my fingers and i mean that's that's really it um that besides 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 washing my hair that's that's all i'm really doing to it yeah i uh i don't really have a i use shampoo in my shower as as one usually does but then i uh i also have a leave-in conditioner that i use and that's pretty much it. I've I've got a couple of little jars of different kinds of pomade by the Paul Mitchell Tea Tree and uh, Paul Mitchell uh, Mitch. Um, but I hardly use since this has gotten longer on top. I really don't use those anymore. I just do like a little pump of the uh, leave-in conditioner. It's the Tea okay. Tree Hair and Body Moisturizer. I do one pump of that, and then just kind of run it through my hair and let my hair dry, and that's it. And uh, I'm sure this is remarkably interesting to many many people but i thought before we talk about choose the right hairstyle right. we should uh you know put our cards on the table as far as what we're up to yeah yeah something i mean something i did learn from my hairstylist is that you know like the some of the leave-in conditioners um because if you have like slightly curly or wavy hair that will tend to keep make the curls kind of come out and and mm-hmm. and 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 cling up whereas like the paste and stuff I like a little bit of a my hair naturally curl, so I like it a little bit straighter, so it can kind of stand a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. So like the pomade and stuff, that stuff will you know keep it straight. But if even if I use the leave-in before that, the pomade doesn't hold up. It just might. It just it makes this just it just everything kind of curls up. And so um, you know, depending on you know what what the occasion is and and how high I want my hair hair to stand up will determine what I use. You know. Gotcha. Um, Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about what the, the author's opinions are um, on men's hair and what uh, yeah. what what our options are. So, uh, the the rule he kind of opens up with is that uh, based on you know modern society, at least short hair, medium hair uh, projects masculinity in a way that long hair does not. Um, while again, you know, you can cite individual cases and, and anecdotal evidence to say, well, I know this guy, he's got long hair and he's extremely masculine. It's like, okay, we, we don't dispute that. It's just across the board. Um, you know, we, we are kind of stuck with some aesthetics in this country uh, and probably in Western society in general, we've got certain aesthetics from, you know, the military background where back when all men had to put some time into the military, because that's how we maintained our, uh, societies and our governments, as well as some of the more conservative looks from, you know, the the 40s and 50s and up into the early 60s, that uh, some of that stuff still remains. And so, for whatever you know, confluence of those factors, it still does seem to be that shorter hair on men does communicate higher levels of masculinity than longer hair, generally speaking. Right? Yeah. Yep. Um. Now, there are certainly, uh, you know, certain careers and uh, interests that long hair um, may suit you better. You know, if you're in a particularly creative career, then you could be surrounded with lots of guys that have longer hair and that could be working just fine for you. And, um, you know, it's not our job. We're not coming out here saying everybody should every guy should have short hair. We're just given some of the uh, information from the book that says you know, for the broadest level of appeal and the broadest mm-hmm. perception of attractiveness, um, short hair communicates masculinity and, uh, longer hair can look more feminine. One thing I would, I would recommend guys, uh, sort of steer clear of, and, uh, Dan and I are kind of living examples of this is do not adopt a hairstyle that requires an excessive amount of grooming whereby your friend, your significant other has to wait for you to be ready to leave the house (laughs) because you have such an elaborate hair situation going on that you have to, you know, spend a lot of time with a lot of different kinds of product that will take you a very long time to get, uh, get ready. Um, for the most part, you know, in addition to short hair, um, women seem to respond to hairstyles on men that don't look overly produced. They can, they can look a little bit, a little bit rough, a little bit maintenance free where, you know, if you're spending your time getting every single hair, just exactly where you want it to be, 
or sticking up in very particular ways, then that could uh, communicate, okay, this guy's got a uh, an unnatural level of interest with making his hair look perfect. What's going on with that? Like, why... Where, where so where, where's yeah, that gonna, coming from? Yeah, yeah. Give me some ideas. So, okay, what would be what would be the the thing? What would be a problem? Where where do you see that bleeding over into an issue potentially in other parts of his life if he's very meticulous about his hair? I would say that that could communicate a um, either a distraction or a obsession mm. even with trying to control details to a level that they they can't naturally be controlled you know what i mean yeah maybe some perfectionist tendencies perhaps yeah yeah maybe perfectionist and and maybe also um it could communicate a a level of belief that your your image that you put out in the world is so important that you have to um you have to sort of really put an iron grip around around that because you you need people to perceive you a very specific way and if they don't then you know your your image falls apart interesting okay all right yeah i could see that um let's talk about uh well the other, the last thing is uh you, you need to have a hairstyle that you're comfortable with and that you like because if if you are grooming yourself in such a way where your only goal is to look more attractive at any costs or for people to like you, that's going to come across in the things you say and do. And people, women included, especially are going to be turned off by that. So don't, uh, don't choose a hairstyle just to please other people. You got to pick something that you like and you think looks good on you as well. Yeah. I mean, I think that that's uh, kind of the running theme throughout this part of the book here is that um, it's really th- th- boils down to your confidence level in terms of how attractive you are to the other, to the opposite sex. Um, be, you know, a lot of that has to do with, um, you know, how you feel about yourself. So if you have a hairstyle that you're not, you know, you're not digging, you're doing for something else or, um, you know, and, and it's basically, you know, you're not, you don't feel like you're, you're, your best, um, just same, same thing. If you're not, you know, and, and we'll get into this, you know, in other parts too, in terms of clothing and other things like that. Um, you know, there's, there's a balance here between, you know, finding something that's, that's stylish or, or, you know, same thing with the hair and something that, you know, you enjoy and it makes you feel good about yourself. And that's, that's, that's something to really, um, it's something that I didn't really pay that much attention to most of my life until I got a little bit older. Um, I kind of devalued my own opinion about stuff. You know, I was mm-hmm. kind of like making decisions like, oh, well, this is what is in style or this is what, you know, uh, other people said that they liked. So, okay, I'll go with it, even though I think it looks a little weird on me or it doesn't make me feel great. You know, eh, it's okay. I kind of like, eh, it's, you know, it's not that big. You know, I kind of settle and then just and kind of like brush it under the table a little bit. You know, brush it under the rug and say, mm-hmm. and you know, and then and and in all fairness, I was kind of brushing my own value, my own opinions um, of myself under the rug, and and kind of making the, and forcing them to not be as important as they should be. Um, so, uh, just something to kind of keep in mind that you know, I've as I've learned you know, for myself over the years is, um, you know, give yourself a little bit more credit. What, uh, anything going on as far as, uh, are you turning gray yet? Mm. Uh, yes, a little bit. Uh, I got yeah. a couple of hairs, you know, on the, on the side, every, every near my, my sideburns. And I have a few in my, my little, my little kind of beard, my, my little goatee here. I've got a couple of them. So, I mean, I, I can't say that I'm really going gray. I, there's mm. a couple that, you know, I feel like, you know, when, when I hear that, my mind is like, you know, there's, there's patches, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, um, so but it's starting, it's starting. Yeah, I, mean, you, I, um, I mean, you got a little bit there in the beard. Oh, definitely in the beard. Yeah, for sure. Yep. In the, in the mustache and the beard, I definitely have some gray. Um, occasionally I'll get very, very little, like right upper sideburn area. Mm -hmm. Um, I haven't noticed much up top, but, uh, you know, I'm not really that obsessed with looking for it. So it could, it could be there and escaping my, my tent, my, my vision. Um, I occasionally will notice a little bit in the eyebrows. Um, 
but yeah, it's, it's a matter of time. I, I think it's going to, you know, at some point you're going to deal with your hair going gray or you're going to deal with your hair falling out or yeah. something. It's going to, it's going to change. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when, when we get to it, probably with very little intervention. Um, I have, uh, have you ever dyed your hair? <laughs> oh yeah, I did once, uh, after college and that was yeah. not a good choice. I, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> what, uh, would you frost your tips or what did you no, do? No, no, no. That probably would have been better to be honest with you. I, um, <laughs> I went to, went to a salon in the mall at the time and because it was a ladies hair salon because I, you know, they, I guess they didn't do that at barbers or I didn't think they did anyway. Anyway. Mm-hmm. So. I, uh, I was like, oh, you know what? I really like when my hair, when I come out of the shower, my hair gets really dark. It's like a jet black. I think, I think that's what you should, that's what I want to go with. And they're like, you sure? And I'm like, oh. yeah, definitely. And they tried to stop me. They really were like, I don't think you should. And, and I was like, no, do it. You know? And so wow. oh, they did. And it really, it was, there was, yeah, there was no like highlights or low lights or whatever. It was just, I mean, it looked literally like a helmet almost. It was, I mean, it did not look good. And I, yeah. Um, so I remember, yeah, I was working, I was working at Panasonic at the time and, uh, uh you know, the, 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 the ladies I worked with were, were very kind and did not, they, but I could, I could, you know, I could see on their face, you yeah. know, that the, they couldn't help, but like, you know, you know, give that, that, that smile, like, Oh my God, what did you do? It looks so funny, but they were so, they were very sweet about it. So, um, yeah, I ended up, uh, uh, that was, that was a one and done. Wow. That's, <laughs> I can't imagine, I can't imagine how that would, cause I think of you as having black hair already anyway. <laughs> Yeah, it was, I mean, you know what? It might've been during the summer where my, my okay. hair neck gets like a natural brown or whatever, or a lighter brown. And uh, yeah, it, I looked, I mean, it was like a, it was kind of like a goth, like a really bad goth look. It was not, yeah, not for me. So how about you? You, uh, you ever mess around? I with have, that? Uh, I have frosted my tips. Yes. Okay. Uh, back in the, um, you know, back in the in sync ryan seacrest days i uh this would have been probably what 99 or 2000 i i played around with that and then i also the first time i grew a beard um i i dyed my beard because i didn't have any gray back then but i had a lot of blonde and and really red hair i mean i had my beard was mostly ginger it's oh, probably wow. The hair that's gray now was probably red back then because I think that's okay. probably the first hair that turns. And uh, yeah, it was just like, man, I, I looked at my beard and I was like, I wish this looked be- – I feel like this would look better if it was just brown instead of all this red and blonde. So I dyed the beard uh, with you know a, a thing of Just for Men from uh, you know Walgreens. Okay. And it, uh, it looked pretty ridiculous. It was so dark. And I look like a pirate, you know, like like the way that pirates have that makeup on that looks like they have thicker stubble. I mean, yeah, you dressed up as a pirate last year yeah, for Halloween. Yeah, I do. You know uh, what yeah, it I looks like. It. I, I can't. Yeah, I can't grow anything here. Yeah, so I I, I have that done. I had the stubble put in. <laughs> yeah, so that's what that's what my just for men beard dyeing experiment uh, looked like. But uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, we're we're currently not uh, dealing with going gray much, just a, a little bit of it, and. Um, it, it is a problem for, uh, guys. I mean, there, there, there's some guys that when they start noticing, they've got some gray hair, they start tweezing and plucking and, and dying almost immediately because I mean, dying their hair, not dying, like dying, uh, <laughs> they start going to work on it. Almost Life's over. I'm exactly. Done. Because they think that, that's, that's the end of something. Um, but, uh, Quite the contrary. That is that is not the problem. And uh, yeah, this is something that uh, the next time we have Kurt and or Richard on, we'll we'll talk with them about. Because I mean, I started hanging out with them six years ago now, and they're the same age as me. And uh, I've only known them as uh, having at least grayish hair, if not gray hair. Yeah. And uh, never have I once seen it gotten in the way of any of their social uh, interactions with people. It's uh, no, absolutely not. And, and I can't really think of it. I don't, I don't know anybody who, you know, it has really gotten in the way of their social interactions. And There's, I mean, if, if anything, based on what Kenwell's talking in the book, I think it may have be helping their social interactions, actually. 
<laughs> yes. Um, yeah, he, you know? he cites a Match.com survey that uh, 72% of women found uh, gray hair to be categorized as either distinguished or just outright hot. Which, so, uh, hey, do they have uh, gray hair dye? I'm thinking... Uh... <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> right, I'm sure they do. If they don't, yeah. at the very least, yeah. we could just we could just get some yeah. baby powder and comb that through your hair, and that'll oh, make it go. look uh, right. a little bit, yeah. you know, grayer. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know if it's possible. I, I imagine what you would probably have to do, and you probably don't want to do this at the mall like you uh, did your first experiment. <laughs> but I would imagine you'd have to dye it like super light first to take all the, you know, take all the dark color out of your hair, and then yeah. maybe you could make it look gray, but. That would be, yeah. That, would seem, that seems like it would be risky to try to make yourself yeah. look gray when you're not. Yeah, I think. I, I mean, I, I'd like the you know, like the streaks kind of. I don't know about the whole thing gray, but um, yeah. Apparently, um, it shows some some sort of wisdom and experience that seems to be valuable for some reason. <laughs> yeah, and we're gonna. Yeah, I mean, I can see why it would be. Uh, we're we're gonna hit quite a few topics in the next uh, couple of episodes here about. Uh, Guys make this mistake where they think such and such is going on with my body and I can't I can't do anything about it or the things that I can do about it, you know, the the prescriptions worse than the disease. And what they don't realize is their problem with their problem is actually their problem. Mm. So and we'll we'll talk about that. We'll, we'll start this again. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. When when your hair starts to change. In this case, we'll talk, we're talking about it going gray, and you let that become a source of anxiety and uh, you know difficulty in your own life and and insecurity. Then the things you do to deal with that could very well end up making you less attractive because you're so you know distracted by and hyper focused on oh no what am I going to do about my gray hair that thinking about your gray hair becomes your problem and you know, trying to deal with that is a thing that distracts you from all these other areas in your life where you could be making yourself better. Yeah. You know, it really, I think it really comes down to being you know mindful of, of your mind. Um, basically, you know, what we've been, you know, taught and programmed up until this point in our lives about our, our feelings about people with gray hair, what kinds of things are we associating with them? And I think some of us, you know, from, you know, from movies, you know, and, 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 you know, TV shows and things like that. And, you know, you associate it with, with people who are, you know, retired and, or are sick or are, you know, at the you know end of their life, things like that. And then, right. you know, and then it's, you know, some of us, that's not the case, you know, maybe you, you know, you grew up around very active, you know, people who went gray really young and they still, you know, were, were, you know, maybe successful and, and, and active and, and, you know, did all these, you know, incredible things. And so subconsciously you're associating, you know, that gray hair with, you know, uh, accomplishment and experience and success and things like that. And, and, you know, so uh, just use this as an opportunity to take a step back and evaluate what, you, where you're, you know, where, where your brain's at, what, you know, you, what, what you're, th how you're thinking about some of these things, um, you know, and, and it, I think it's a, it's a good thing to do throughout the different chapters of this book as well, uh, as he brings up different topics is, you know, take a step back and see, okay, you know, what, you know, what are my beliefs around this? How do I feel about the, this specific topic? Um, because, a lot of the 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 things uh, he talks about in the book really are are based on studies that you know kind of take those opinions uh, mm -hmm. out of out of the equation or your own biases out of the equation and helps you perhaps think of it in a different way. And think right. of it in a new way. And that's one of the reasons why I really like the book. It's just like, oh, wow. Like, so, you know, hey, this isn't, you know, this isn't just one other person's opinion on this. This is, you know, this is, you know, the, he's pulling this information from a study of thousands of people. So maybe there's a little bit more validity here. You know, obviously, don't dismiss your own opinions, please. But at the same time, it's like, oh, well, okay, there might be another way to think about this. Yeah. And I think uh, one, one thing that, we as men and and maybe even more generally as humans tend to do is, you know, if we're not getting the results that we wish we were getting, um, you know, particularly in this domain of romance and, and attraction, um, 
it does feel a little bit easier to just hyper focus on one thing that we can say, here's what my problem is. And if it's something we can't do anything about, all the better, because then that takes the pressure off of us. But, you know, if if your hair is thinning and going gray and you're wearing clothes that don't fit you right and you're carrying around 30 extra pounds, you know, and you're working a ridiculous number of hours in a job that you hate and you don't have any kind of meditation practice and you don't have a hobby that you're passionate about. So if you have all these things that stack up and, and make you overall a less attractive person, it's, it's a lot less pressure on yourself to say, Oh, it's cause my hair is going gray. That's, that's my problem. And I can't do anything about it. So woe is me. Yeah. I mean, you know, one of the, one of the things, um, BJ Fogg talks about in, in tiny habits was when he was looking at himself about his tidiness habit and he didn't really think he was that, you know, he, he didn't really think he made that much of a mess. And then, you know, after, you know, thinking about it and looking at these things, and I think talking to his partner and stuff, he realized how much, how many different ways he makes a mess around the house and how sloppy he is. And he started yeah. to feel bad about himself and he started, and he, and he, he kind of puts a warning out there in the, in the book and says, listen, you know, when you're trying to change a bad habit um, and you start looking at, you know, so, you know, eating, you know, eating junk food or whatever, and then you start looking throughout your day at the specifics of when you do that. And the same thing applies here is you might start to beat yourself up because like, oh my God, I didn't realize I was doing it so often. And, and, you know, you still, oh, how could I be so blind to it? You know, I'm a bad person because I'm doing all these things. It, and I think the same, what you just rattled off there, you know, it's not, just, if it's more than one problem here, just, just kind of be kind to yourself and Hey, listen, you got to start somewhere, but, but, you know, try not to let it, you know, spiral into a, you know, a vicious, uh, downward spiral and, and, you're right. and you know, make yourself feel bad about it. You know, uh, at least you're now aware of it. And that's the first step to, to, to changing things and getting, and, and, and getting better results. Yeah. So before uh, we'll, we'll cover um, the specifics of going bald on the next episode, but I, I did want to share one thing about uh, your hairstyle. And this is some advice that I got from uh, Robert Glover's book, dating essentials for men about my um, hairstyle. Huh? <laughs> You said What's that? your hairstyle. And I was like, but my no. hairstyle? No, about one's hairstyle. Uh, okay. um, this one? If you decide that, <laughs> settle down. If you decide that you uh, <laughs> you want to do something different, the the best way to go about that, um, at least the best advice I've ever read, is go to a professional like the best, you know, whoever's got the best Google reviews or Yelp reviews in your town for doing men's hair. Uh and almost, I would say, regardless of cost, because I'm going to tell you how this is going to actually save you money. Go to go to the best place and say, hey, I'm, I'm open to do something different with my hair based on the shape of my head and my face. What do you think I should do? And then just let them do that to you. And then assuming that you like it, which you probably will, if they're if they're a professional and, they're, and they've got the reputation for being the best, you'll probably look pretty good. Um, then after you get your haircut, go home and have your friend or your spouse or whoever take all kinds of pictures of you and your hair from all different angles. And then once you've got that, you can start going back to the cheap place that you get your hair cut. Usually the, the barber shop or whatever and say, Hey, I decided to do something different with my hair. Here's a picture. Here's several pictures of it. Swipe through these and just make it look like this. And again, it'll be a, a bit of an upfront cost originally because you're paying somebody who's really good and has a reputation for being really good to do something new. But then you don't have to keep going back to them over and over again if you can't afford it. Now, if you really like what they did and you you know enjoyed the relationship, then maybe it's worth spending some more money on your hair. And depending on the style, you know maybe you don't have to get your hair cut that often. I'm I'm good for every two weeks. I've because I keep this part of my hair so short. You know, after two weeks, it's two or three times as long as it was on the day that I got the haircut. So it starts looking like it needs it needs to get tended to. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so that is one thing I would definitely say, keep in mind when, uh, when you're not happy with the way that your hair is looking and you think it might be time to, to switch it up, go someplace really, really good, get a bunch of pictures of it. And then you don't have to keep going to that same expensive, really, really good place all the time because it's a lot easier for your corner barbershop guy to reproduce something that you're showing him a picture of than it is to create something really good for you from scratch. 
Absolutely. That's a great tip. Um, and, and, you know, think about it, it's a one-time investment and, you know, that's going to reap rewards, you know, for years to come and, and how much can you, you know, what, what kind of price tag can you put on feeling good about yourself and, and giving yourself a little bit extra confidence? Cause you know, you, you really enjoy the way, you know, your hair came out and that's just going to translate into, you know, so many different little interactions that may not be obvious throughout your day. Yeah. Um, the other thing I would say about gray hair uh, specifically is it does look better short than long for the most part, because if, if it's if your hair is very long and very gray or white, then you do run the risk of looking like a witch. And uh, that <laughs> is usually something to be avoided for most men looking to attract women. Um, the other thing is if if you're getting a little bit of gray and you just you choose not to like that and you want to do something about it, um, you know, don't don't just buy the cheapest dye off the uh, off the shelf and and use that on yourself and think that it's going to look great, especially if you've got more than like 20 percent gray coverage in your hair. Uh, I would say experiment with maybe going to someone and say, you know, like somebody good, the same person that we talked about in the last story, that that person that has the best reputation for doing men's hair in your town, go to them, let them dye it, and then you can see what you think of it and if you like it or not, and then decide in most cases, I'm going to recommend against dyeing your hair. I mm. Most of the stories of men dyeing their hair, I mean, I think of people like um, Paul McCartney and Bob Costas both come to mind where, you know, if you see them anytime recently, uh, they have 70-year-old faces with 35-year-old <laughs> brown hair. And <laughs> Costas in particular looks like somebody just rubbed shoe polish through his head. It's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't it doesn't make they would make their their appearance would make more sense if they had some gray in their hair. Yeah, because as humans, we're we're we've evolved to notice those things that appear a little bit off, whether it's plastic surgery or hair dye or whatever. You know, there's something when, when you see hmm, that doesn't match that. Uh, I You know, a lot of uh, women politicians feel the need, especially on the national level, feel the need to do the same thing. When you look yeah. at some of the women who are in the Senate or in the uh, House or you know, even Hillary Clinton, when she was running for president, it's like, you know, she's not a bad looking woman, but that her, the condition of the wrinkles and age on her face did not match the blonde hair that she, you know, was constantly showing off at these town halls and on these campaign stops. It's like, there's, you know, and, and I can understand why women in particular feel a need to look and appear as young as they possibly can. But, uh, they're, when, when you look at someone and you see, Hmm, you know, the, What's going on with your face and what's going on your with with your hair doesn't match up. There's there's something going on there that doesn't seem natural to me. Yeah, uh, and, and I think with men it can it can be even more pronounced when you know when you're as a guy you're getting older and your your male facial features are starting to sort of soften a little bit on account of the lack of testosterone, and then you have this bright brown hair that yeah I I would say under most circumstances. Do not dye your gray hair. Just keep it short and keep it conservatively styled and you'll look your best. Unless you get a facelift or Botox. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. Again, even, sure. even with those, Dan, I mean, when we talk about <laughs> surgical interventions for, for youthful appearances, yeah, it's, it has more of a chance of going wrong than it does going right for both true. men and women. I, I, right. So, I mean, I, I, so here's the question though. I mean, we always notice when it goes wrong. I mean, you know, Maybe there's a lot of right out there and we just don't know because it, it's so good. But I, I don't know. I can't answer that question. You know, are we only noticing the wrong ones? And yeah. All the, I, I mean, is, I there a, is there a lot more right ones out there? I suspect that, uh, I mean, there could be, but uh, mm. yeah, like I, I suspect that Nicole Kidman probably has work done. But she still looks amazing because she has Nicole Kidman money, yeah, and she has Nicole Kidman photographers. Now, and, she have uh, a little Tom Cruise money too. Did she ever get any? Uh, that's a good <laughs> question. Was it, was I, I don't know. She, out of that? she may. I mean, but, she, I'm sure uh, she I mean, she's, need she's it, making but... plenty on her own. Uh, exactly, so. exactly. But uh, you know, I don't know if Tom Cruise money gets you a better plastic surgeon than Nicole Kidman money. But uh, either way, most of the people who are out there considering plastic surgery don't have. Yeah. that kind of money at all yeah. so you know getting uh getting plastic surgery through a groupon doesn't seem to be the move because we gotta <laughs> we kind of spot that that's funny all right so um hey got any uh apps or uh tips that you would like to uh talk about before we close today 
I do, yeah. So okay. one 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 app I've actually been ramping up using a lot more lately um, for to try just get stuff done. It's called Brain.fm, and uh, it's it's both an app and a website that you can use. So if you if you're not using uh, your phone, you're sitting at your computer, uh, you can't have headphones in. You can you know play it in the background, and it's great because it uses um, basically different. Um, uh, patterns of of sounds to basically make your brain uh the brain entrainment so it will your brain will start to match the waves of uh it, it's it's brain waves will match the sounds and in, in, in the background and uh the you can do use this for for focus for sleep for meditation for mm. um and and then you can actually really customize it so for focus um you could be for studying and reading and like memory retention, another one for creative expression and ideation, another one for uh, if you're doing really detailed work, um, you know, like we're working on spreadsheets, number crunching, things like that. And it, it starts to work within like 10 or 15 minutes. Um, I've been using it for years and uh, it, it works just as well as, you know, some of these, you know, ADD medications, at least for me, it does. Wow. Um, and I just have it playing in the background uh, on my computer. You get even more of effect if you've got the the headphones in and you're listening to it um, from from uh, from your phone. So, uh, Brain.fm, and it's not crazy expensive. It's definitely worth a try. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's definitely kept me focused for sure. And then I, I used it a little bit last night for some sleep. Um, and it, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's pretty detailed in terms of the specific situation you're in. So let's say you're trying to fall asleep. They've got a specific track for that. Whereas mm. if you want to stay asleep, they've got a different track for that. So, um, I, I highly recommend it. Okay, cool. Um, and I've been threatening to share my, uh, some of my travel tips for an episode or two. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm down to do that now. So the, uh, the app that I use for finding cheap flights is called Skyscanner, and I believe it's available for both iOS and Android. And uh, yeah, I, I use it all the time. Now, I typically don't actually book my flights with it. I use it to find the best deals on flights, and then I go directly to the airlines to to book them because I just find that easier to deal with in case you have a problem or a customer service issue or something like that. If you just buy your tickets directly from the airline instead of through a third party, um, essentially a travel agency website, uh, I find that to be easier to, to deal with things. But Skyscanner lets you find those good deals and then you just go straight to the uh, the website of the company that's offering the deal and or the the straight to the company of the airline and you find the same pricing. So I... I don't see a reason not to do it that way, but uh, you open up the Skyscanner app and there's a button that says explore everywhere. And once you uh, click on that, then it will uh, auto detect your closest airport, uh, which for me right now it's Orlando Sanford, but they don't have enough flights. So I changed that to Orlando International. And then it gives me a list of a few buttons by country uh, or territory. So first is United States and I've got uh Round trip trips in the United States from $37. Uh, round trip to Puerto Rico for $70. Mexico, $137. Canada, $141. And then let's see, where's the first uh, European trip? I'm getting a lot of Latin America. And then I keep scrolling down to Denmark. Uh, round trip ticket for $385. Um, so again, and then you've got to decide if the dates that are coming up as the cheapest dates will work for you or not. And, you know, um, I've got a, a work situation and a career that uh, I can usually juggle things around quite a bit to make certain days of the week work for me that other people might not. But, um, yeah, I, I love this app and I find it all the time. Um, sometimes when you go to view the actual details, you'll see that the, the cheap, uh, plane ticket, price isn't actually available it was when they pulled but it may go up a little bit like right now it says in the u.s the cheapest flights are 37 dollars round trips and that's for atlanta durham north carolina and philadelphia uh then with washington dc shortly behind at 39 dollars, and then you click on it and then you can see the actual days and and days of the week and stuff that these flights take place on and uh 
Nice. Yeah, every time I open this app, I almost buy something because it's so inexpensive. And then uh, then I'll talk about on the next podcast the app that I use for cheap accommodations. But Skyscanner is my go-to for, for cheap flights. Fantastic. All right. Anything else for today, Dan? Uh, not for me. All right. Let's... Uh, you and I will take a quick break and uh, refill our coffee, and then we'll record a second episode where we talk about going bald. Nice. Can't wait. All right. See you soon. Have a good one. Bye-bye.